Praise the Lord. Our song is in Igbo and Yoruba. The one in Igbo, the title in English is, My God, I've given myself to thee. Use me to do what is pleasing to thee. The one in Yoruba is titled, Okwe Iyola Ugo Fwele Dumari. God bless you as you listen.
Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful singing. Hallelujah. Both songs are just power packed, full of anointing. Amen. Let's turn to the Holy Book. We are reading from the book of Proverbs this morning. The book of wisdom and our topic will be something that many people do not like to talk about. But the fact that it is in the scriptures makes it important for us to talk about it and encourage one another in that direction. Proverbs chapter 6. Are we there? Chapter 6. Proverbs. Reading from verse 5 to verse 11. Deliver thyself. I want you to say that with me. Who is to do the delivery? Very good. Very good. Keep that in mind. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways. And be wise. Which, having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer, and gathered her food in the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When? Wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you for the songs of worship this morning. 
the Sunday school and the prayers your children have offered. We invite you, Lord, to break for us the bread of life that we may eat and hunger no more. Give us also the water of life that we may drink and thirst no more. Thank you for our brothers and sisters that have come to worship you with us for the first time today. May you bless each and every one. We remember our little children, Lord, and their teachers. We ask, Lord, that your presence will be among us this morning. To save, to deliver, to heal, to restore the backslider. And make the sorrowful heart to rejoice again. Give us the understanding of your word, O God. Bless your church, wherever they gather this morning to worship you. We bring under subjection every power, every authority, visible or invisible. Bring them to subjection to the authority and power of your name. Lord, may we all share the blessings of today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And the church says, Amen. 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 Please be seated. Now this is the time to be seated. With your Bible in your hand. For that is the main purpose for which we are here. My topic this morning is very simple. Poverty. Poverty is a cause. Poverty is not a blessing. Did you hear what I said? Poverty is not a blessing. Poverty is a cause. Poverty is punishment. Yet, the Lord Jesus recognizes that there are poor people on earth. In fact, in the scripture, he said, the poor will always be with you. The scripture we have read is highlighting poverty. How it comes and how it can be avoided. Can poverty be avoided? The answer is yes. The Bible describes poverty in the in verse 5 that we just read as a hunter and a fowler. And so we are told to deliver ourselves. You are to deliver yourself. I am to deliver myself from the hunter. So Poverty is that spirit that goes about looking for lazy people. The Bible calls them sluggard. A sluggard is a lazy man. A lazy woman. The spirit of poverty goes about hunting such people. Just like a hunter goes into the bush looking for an animal. And we are told to deliver ourselves from this hunter. In other words, there is something we can do and get away from poverty. Poverty simply means one who cannot provide for himself. A poor man cannot provide what he needs. You have a house, you cannot pay the rent. You may have a car, but you can't repay it. You may have a child in school, you can't pay school fees. You are hungry, you cannot eat. A poor person is someone who cannot from time to time provide his or her need. You can be a man that was rich at one time. Then because you are rich you become a sluggard. 
and you start sleeping and folding hands and doing nothing and gradually, gradually the hunter is watching and before you know it that hunter captures you and what you do is start eating what you reserved and as you eat what you reserved and you are not replenishing you are not replenishing what you are eating gradually, gradually poverty catches up with you we can escape from poverty we can deliver ourselves from poverty the Bible describes poverty as a fowler that is like a trap a trap that people set for birds a bird will fly down and perch looking at something it thinks is food not knowing beyond the food there's a trap Poverty is like a trap set by the devil. Waiting for sluggards to walk into it. And they are captured. Now, one of the ways the Bible says that we can escape from poverty is not to go to university. I have seen University graduates, poor and wretched. Have you seen one? Yes. I have seen lawyers dying of hunger. And because they are so hungry and can do nothing, all they do is go to police station, they call them charge and bail. I have seen doctors selling yam. In this Lagos. Go to the north. Load the arm. Come and sell. I have seen highly educated people with nothing to offer. So, the Bible did not say go to university. The Bible did not say go to any man. The Bible brought us down, 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 down not even to study lions or elephants but to study what? ants to study ants and the startling revelation was given to us there that these little creatures have no overseers they have no kings that rule over them and they have no guide that tells them where the food is. They don't have all these things. But we are told that they provide for themselves. They provided her meat in the summer. In the summer. Knowing that winter will come. Summer is the best weather. In, in the in, in, in overseas, summer is their best weather. Winter full of snow and so forth. The ant knows that winter will come, and when winter comes, snow covers the earth, and they will not be able to move around. So, because they know winter will come, they provide their food in summer. So that in winter, they won't be running up and down. What a wisdom God hid in an ant. We who are human never think about summer, winter, or we never think about, for example, a young man thinking one day I'm going to get married. Let me save some money. No. A young man gets married. He doesn't consider, one day I'm going to have a baby. Let me save some money. They don't provide in the days of summer. Human beings don't provide when they have plenty. As they get, that's where they spend. They never think, they never plan that things may turn out 
the world they never expected. And because of lack of planning, because of lack of providing or saving in your summer, when you have plenty, you consume all you have. And when winter comes, you are not able to meet your need. A young man does not consider Oh, the month will end and I will pay house rent. He gets money today, dash from the women, use some for this, and finish it. And then start borrowing. Never thinks, winter will come. The month will end and I'll have to meet some expenses. Let me save this money. My child may be sick and I, I need to go to the hospital. Let me reserve this money in case my car breaks down. I should be able to fix it. In the days of summer, when you have plenty, very few people think about saving. Very few people remember that's coming winter after summer. We are told to go and understudy ants. Ants provide for themselves in summer. Why? They know winter will come. Winter will come. No ant can stop winter from coming. And when winter comes, he has already provided for winter. It's not the same with human beings. They see a new dress, they buy. A new shoe, they buy. A new umbrella, they buy. A new this, they buy. They don't need it, but they just buy it because people are buying. Some buy in advance. They spend their salary in advance. People bring things to their place of work. They buy it. They don't have money. They buy it, they keep it, what it will pay at the end of the month. These are sluggards that never remember that will come winter. Therefore, that trap, that hunter called poverty is locking at the corner waiting for the end of the month. And because you have already spent your money, when that winter comes, you become a poor man. You become a poor woman. You are not able to meet your needs anymore. The children want this, you can't provide. Your wife wants this, you can't provide. The landlord is abusing you, you can't reply. Why? You did not plan in summer that winter will come. May the Lord help us. It says the ant gathered her food in the harvest. Harvest time is always the time of plenty. When food is all over the market. Food is all over the village. Food is everywhere because it's time for harvest. You have old food, you have new ones that have just been harvested. Everywhere is food. That is when the ants gather their food in harvest. Today, we are mostly government workers and businessmen. At the end of the month, we harvest. But some of us already have eaten everything in advance. And so at the end of the month, when there should be plenty of money in the pocket, the money is already gone before it came. Because we are not wise like the ant. If you don't have one big television in your house, will the police arrest you? Huh? Why must you buy a car in advance? Or buy a car, what do they call it? Higher purchase. Why should you do that? What if the car gets burnt? What if it is stolen? You will still pay for it. Yet you have lost it before paying. And then that spirit called poverty. Roaming around like a hunter. Sees you dilapidated and frustrated. What does he do? Capture you. Just like a hunter captures an animal. Because you are not wise. I wonder how many of us are wise like the ant. 
I preached a message some time ago. Family economy. There are people who don't think, don't plan. And because they don't think, they don't plan, they spend the money they have lavishly, uselessly, in things that don't matter. And they keep borrowing every day. They keep borrowing every month. They remain poor and wretched. Why? They have been caught by this hunter. During your harvest, at the end of the month, you should be able to sit down. Ask yourself, what is my harvest? The Bible speaks about the man in the Bible that his farm produced tremendously. And after his harvest, he told his soul, sit down. Enjoy. I will pull down my storehouse and build a bigger one. I don't blame him. He worked hard. But he didn't have wisdom to give glory to God first. So the Bible says his soul was required of him. At the end of the month, if you are not the type of person that wants this hunter to capture you, called poverty. There are people you see driving cars up and down, but they are so poor, nothing in their pocket. They are owing more than you can ever imagine. Why? They don't plan like the ants. They live a flamboyant life. A life that people will look at and say, wonderful, this is a great man. But we, beyond what the eye sees, they live in sorrow. The Bible says it is better for a man to be uh, uh, satisfied with what he has. Glory be to God. I used to say, I prefer to be a king in the village than a slave in the city. Do you understand that? Yes. It's better in your house you are comfortable. Outside, they may see you as nobody. But in your house, you are comfortable. Than to be big man out there. But in your house, landlord has given you quick notice. Because you are not planning. Poverty is a hunter. And the Bible says we can deliver ourselves from it. Glory be to our God. Alright. Look at verse uh, how long look at verse nine. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep and a little slumber. And what happens? A little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come. As one that traveleth, and I want as an armed man. When you have a need like an armed robber, because you have need, you have want, then you go and grab what doesn't belong to you. You had wasted your time sleeping. Sleeping. There are people here that are looking for work. And there's plenty of work. But they can't do it. They cannot do the work. Pride. I'm, I'm a graduate. And he's dying of hunger. Why don't you start with something small? Anything that can put money in your pocket. The only job that you must not do is stealing. You can do anything else. And when you humble yourself, God will exalt you. Why does this slow God prefer to sleep? Fold his hands. He doesn't want to do anything. Just fold his hands. There are people like that. 
Their wives are workaholics. They wake up 5 a.m. and labor till night. And the man will lie down there sleeping. And every month the wife is pregnant. Every month the wife is pregnant. The only factory he works at is producing babies. And the moment he produces the baby, that's all. Can't provide for the baby, can't provide for the wife, nothing. That is the slogan. Fold his hands. And little by little, little by little, poverty will recognize him and see him as a slogan, and the hunter will capture him. You can avoid poverty. He's a hunter. Just like an animal. If an animal sees a hunter with gun pointing at him, what do you think he will do? Run! Run! And from today, you begin to see poverty as a hunter. And what do you do? Run! Wake up in the morning, look for something to do. No matter how small. What is it? You are running away from that hunter. It's a fowler. It's a trap. And that trap will not catch you. Start from somewhere. God did not say we are going to be poor. That's not for you. But if you make yourself a poor man, then you have yourself to blame. Don't wake up in the morning by 10 o'clock. When others are all in their place of work. When will you go to work? When will, what, what kind of job will you get? Pray to God. Give me my daily bread. Then go out and look for it. God will give you your daily bread. Don't just carry a certificate and be going all over Lagos. A little sleep. A little slumber. A little folding of the hand. Then your poverty will come. Unexpectedly. Anyway. Glory be to our God. Look at verse 6. To verse 8. Again. Go to the ant. Thou slogan, consider her ways and be wise. Which having no guide, overseer or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. Who will agree now that is a slogan? A sluggard is that person who doesn't want to do anything. He doesn't want to do anything. He doesn't want to labor. But he wants to eat. He wants to dress well. No matter where your wife hides money, you go and dig it out. And when you have consumed the whole thing, the family is left poor and wretched. I challenge you today brother I challenge you today sister from now on the spirit of a sluggard will depart from you you will run away from poverty that hunter will not catch you that crap of a fowler will not catch you you will be prosperous in whatever you lay your hands to do the God of heaven has decreed that you will be in good health and you will prosper. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Come on, read that for me. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Verse 1 to 5. 
Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How that in a great fire of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Amen. Can we say amen? amen. Paul recounts the experience he had with the churches of Macedonia. Macedonian church was a very poor church. Paul describes it as deep poverty. But in that condition, their liberality was made manifest. They were able to give out of poverty. You see, another way of escaping or delivering ourselves from, from poverty is to give. What did the Bible say? Give and it shall be. That's the only way you get. That's the only way you get. Not only studying the ant. We are supposed to study the churches of Macedonia. How in their deep poverty. Their ability to give for the things of God. Was so abundant. So manifest. That Paul said. It wasn't even the way they expected. Why was the church of Macedonia. Able to do that. Look at verse, uh, verse 5. And this they did. Not as we hoped. But first gave their own selves to who? To the Lord. And unto, unto us by the will of God. Glory be to his holy name. The churches of Macedonia first gave themselves to God. First give yourself to God. If you give yourself to God, God resumes responsibility over you. Then you will be able to give out of your poverty. And when you give out of that your poverty, God will replenish you according to his promise. Give and shall be given to you. Shake down. Press down, shake it together. Shall men do what? Can I hear you? Men shall do what? Give to your bosom. Men shall give to your bosom. If you are able to give. But first, give yourself to the Lord. If you cannot give yourself to the Lord, you will not be able to give anything else to the Lord. If you are able to give yourself to the Lord, then nothing more can be more important. And he that giveth is given back. Poverty is a spirit. The Bible says it's a hunter. Going about, just like hunters go from place to place in the bush looking for careless animals. And the moment that hunter notices you that you are a sluggard, by 9 o'clock you are still sleeping. By 10 o'clock you never wake up. Some no go bath. 
till three o'clock in the day. They have not had their bath. Lazy. Sluggard. A little folding of the hands. When you fold your hand, how can you walk? You see this job. Ah, I know if you do this one. You see this job. Ah, I know if you do this one. Brother, what are you doing now? Oh, I'm washing car down at the junction. Car? You mean you are washing car? Ah, I cannot do that too. But which one are you doing now, brother? Nothing. Nothing. He's doing nothing. You may be washing car. And you wash one man's car very well. And the man will say, This is a, a job well done. And did you go to school? Yes, sir, I went. What did you read? I read such and such. Okay, here is my card. See me in my office tomorrow. It happens. <laughs> Glory be to our God. You never know where God will open the door for you. But if you say you cannot do that, the Bible says if you are faithful in small, then you'll be faithful in, 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 in plenty. And if you are faithful in another man's thing, then God will give you your own. See? Poverty is not what people think. Some people think, well, my parents were poor. That's why I am poor. No. No. Check your parents, whether they were sluggards. Whether they were uh, they, they, they were the careless type, the drunken type. Everybody has the opportunity to prosper and be in good health. Amen. That's the will of God concerning His children. Amen. Sit down, plan, plan for the family. Gather in the harvest. Gather in the summer, because winter will come. Somebody is going to be sick. Plan for that. Your car can spoil. Plan for that. Landlord will be paid. Plan for that. School fees will be paid. Plan for that. Cut down on suya. Cut down on malt. Cut down on all this frivolous eating. Eat only when you are hungry. Don't eat because you see something to eat. Eat when you are hungry. Amen. That way, you will deliver yourself from poverty. Glory be to His holy name. Turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. I need to get the right verse I want. All right. Look at uh, verse 2. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and have borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Amen. Amen. In verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Glory be to you. Amen. The first love of a believer, when you get converted, the first love of a believer is a love that humbles you. Makes you very humble. And the Lord is telling us here that He knows our works. I know that works and thy labor. Whatever we labor upon, whatever our works are, the Lord knows. There are people who are poor today because they are doing what they are not supposed to be doing. And because they are doing what they are not supposed to be doing, they are not prospering. They are not prospering because God is not helping them. 
There are many of you here who know that the labor, the works you are laboring and working to make a living is not what a child of God should be doing. And because it is not what a child of God should be doing, God is not helping you. Because there's a lot of fraud, a lot of lying, a lot of unrighteousness that goes with it. There are other people, other Christians, that can be doing that. The Bible says you tasted them that say they are apostles, but they are not. They do such things without any condemnation in their hearts. But you know, when you do things that God does not expect you to do, there's always a condemnation in your heart. God knows our works. Not only the labor in the house of God, but the works through which we make our living. There are some of us who are doing what we should be doing. But the way we are doing it is not to the glory of God. We are doing it the way the worldly people are doing it. Just because they want to make more profit, more money. And because God is not helping you, their labor is like in vain. As if it's in vain. For without Christ we can do nothing. Even in our labor, in our business, in our place of work, the Bible says promotion does not come from the north or the south. It comes from who? It comes from God. There are many of you who ought to be promoted by now to a higher position in your place of work, but you are not yet promoted. That's a trial that you must endure. God knows you are there. And God knows what the management are doing with you. One thing is sure, you cannot be put to shame. At the right time, God will adjust you. We remember the story of uh, Mordecai. Yes. How he saved the king's life. And was forgotten. He didn't protest. He didn't write a billboard and stand on the road and say, since I saved the king's life, I ought to be recognized. I made the minister of defense. But nobody cares about me. He waited patiently. The Bible speaks about patience. Well, we just read now. Patiently. Until one day, God in his own way, not in our way, in his own way, took sleep away from the king's eyes. And since he could not sleep, he said, okay, let me read some books. Get me the chronicles of events in my kingdom. And they gave him the books and he began to read. And God wrote Mordecai. The story of Mordecai was told. And he called his servants. This man that did this thing. He didn't even know who the man was. This man that did this thing. What has been done to him? The servants said, not no king. Nothing? Yes, nothing. <coughs> he said, okay. In the morning, I'll do something about it. And in the next morning, the arch enemy of the Jews, the number one enemy of Mordecai, came to take permission to crucify the Jews. You see God's way of working? And the king said, Who is there in the courtyard? They said, Oh, what is his name again? Haman. He should have called Haman. But the Haman. And the king said, that's exactly the person I want. Call him. And he came. High, high, today they call him high chief. High minister. And the king said to him, what do you think we should do to a man that saved the king's life? The Bible says he thought he is the person that is going to get the honor. So he spoke about the best things that can ever be done. I was told a story of a young man or a king lost his ring, his royal ring, and made a proclamation. Anybody that finds a ring should uh, 
be given half of his kingdom and marry his daughter and become second or third ruler in the kingdom and everybody looked for it they couldn't find it until one young man found it and brought it to the palace and he had to pass security men three of them before getting to the king and they asked him what he came to do at the first security point he said I have found the king's ring and they said where is it he said I cannot show you I want to tell the king first and the man said okay we can only allow you pass here if when the king reward you you will give us 1% of the gold and silver the young man said okay I promise they let him pass he went to the second one they stopped him why are you here I found the king's ring I want to give it to him the people say you can only pass here if you make a promise to give us 10% who are those people going up and down who are those people going up and down and the young man said I promise I will give you 10% of whatever the king gives to me they went to the third place why are you here the young man said I found the king's ring and I want to return it they said well if you cross here now you see the king but what is our own share the young man said what do you want he said well we want 20% of the gold and silver that the king will give to you the young man said I promise they let him go to the king and when they presented the ring it was exactly what the king was looking for and the king made a proclamation that this young man has found his rings they should divide the kingdom into two give him one and they will give him the wife as his, the daughter as his wife and so on and the young man said oh king now that's not what he wanted the king said what do you want he said he wants 24 lashes first before any other thing can be given the king was shocked what do you mean you want 24 lashes on a day like this he said oh king that's the first thing he wants 24 lashes and the king said well if that is what you want that's what you get and the man said oh king before I get it, lashes there are other people I promised <laughs> to share what the king will give to me and the king said who are these people he said the first security people have 1% of whatever you give me the second set 10% the third set, 20%. By the time they add it up, the 24 lashes have gone to these people. And the king said, Bring them, bring them. They brought them and gave them the percentage of the lashes. And that way, the king dismissed all of them. And the young man got his reward. See, sometimes it's very, it's very wicked to be selfish. So, Haman thought that the king was going to honor him. If he had known it was Mordecai, he would have said, let us load one truck of cement and let him pull it down to the palace. If he's able to pull it down, we'll honor him. But because he thought it was him, he said, let the king's best chariot be decorated. Let him wear the king's robe let him wear the king's crown and let a, a high priest lead him along the streets and be proclaiming this is the man that the king wants to honor and when he finished the king said that is wonderful make sure that not one is not done do everything you have said to Mordecai the Jew Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't pray for your enemy to die. Let him live. Huh? Let him live. Let her live. And see the way the king will decorate you. Praise the Lord. People who say die, kill him, die, back to sender, fire for fire. 
That's not a Christian prayer. No. If your enemy hunger, feed him. Can you imagine Haman walking on the leg? Mordecai on the royal chariot. And Haman is shouting, This is the man that the king wants to honor. When you got home that day, the wife said, How was your day? I'm sure he said, Don't ask me again. I've never been humiliated all my life. And the wife said, If Mordecai is a Jew and you have started falling, you can never defeat him again. Your enemies can never defeat you. They can never defeat you. They can never defeat you. Their prophecies can never work in your life. They will live to see the goodness of God in your life. Amen. God bless you. Glory be to our God. The Bible says, deliver thyself. So it is possible that we deliver ourselves from poverty. That's not the will of God concerning you. And then you are delivering yourself from poverty. Be honest. In everything you do, be what? Honest. Be honest. Be honest. It pays. At last, you are going to rejoice. Don't be dishonest. Be honest. And God will bless the work of your hands. We are going to pray now. Now you know that we can run away from that hunter. We can escape from that trap called poverty. We can wake up in the morning and not be sluggard. We can look for something to do no matter how small. Give us this day our daily bread. We should go out there and get it. Now, make yourself comfortable. And let us pray.